Hi, my name is Gina Robinson. I'm an instructor of mathematics here at North Atlanta High School. This year I'm teaching Algebra 2 and IB Math Applications and Interpretations. Today I'm going to show you how to use Desmos in your classroom and give you a little preview on how to customize them yourself. Eventually I will show you how to make your own Desmos activities. Desmos is not in my backpack. We are not referring to the calculator. We are instead referring to the activity builder, which is free, okay? And it's got found at teacher.desmos.com. So I'm going there right now. I recommend that you sign in with Google. Just one less password to remember. So once I sign in to Google, there's a few things we need to know about it. Again, it's not in my backpack completely free to educators and students. And the first thing we are going um, to consider is the fact that Desmos is great for introducing students to the graphing calculator because the Desmos graphing calculator is used not only for the EOC, but now the ACT, PSAT, and SAT online. It fosters critical thinking, collaboration, and open-ended questions for our students, and it increases engagement because students are able to see things move and interact. Um, they're able to collaborate with each other. A few years ago, Desmos acquired Amplify. So now we have access to all of the Des the Amplify curriculum from kindergarten all the way through Algebra 1. I'm going to go back because you can also look at their featured collections, which doesn't stop at Algebra 1. It goes right into calculus, conics, um, advanced algebra. You can see the list of topics here. Another way to find great Desmos activities, because they only select certain activities here um, for either featured collections or through Amplify, is to go ahead and do a search. So for instance, if I'm looking for something on geometric sequences, this is my favorite way to find um, our activities. You can do geometric sequences, Desmos, and then you will see activity builders that are made by other teachers, not necessarily sponsored by Desmos. There are some great activities here, and then sometimes you can merge those. Let's go back to my activity. I have quite a few, so I'm going to go to my custom activities right here. As you can see, I've been making them for a few years. Um, I can go all the way down and you have your whole collection right here, right? And then you can keep looking for your activities as you continue to build them. Let's go back in and start using Desmos. When you're assigning Desmos to your class, after you make your activity, you're going to select teach or assign. I do like to assign mine for a year. I'm going to go back and show you how to assign as if it's new. You are going to go to single session code. I like to hit one year. Um, of course, you can limit it to either two weeks or 48 hours. It's up to you. I will show you how you can pause and um, go back to certain Desmos activities later. So let's go ahead and start a new one. single session code, one year, create invite code. And then you're going to select teach. You can either copy the link and put that in your Google Classroom or give students the code. You can sync Desmos to your Google Classroom. However, I tend not to do that. It gives me more control over my activities that way. Um, so, But you are free to um, do that as well. All right, so now we are in our activity. If you are looking to see how it will appear on the student standpoint, from the student point of view, you can go to student and do preview, and then go through and see how students um, will view the activities. Before we get into this, I will say that Desmos is awesome, not great for everything. It is best used when you have a substitute you can monitor your students while you're away or have um, a completely built out lesson while you are out. Great for after assessment activities. So when students are done with a common assessment or any assessment in your class and 
finishing at different times, they can jump right into the Desmos activity that you created to have them move on to the next topic. Great when they're exploring a new topic and my favorite before or after a long break, which usually coincides with a new topic or review. Great for reviewing content, especially before the common assessments, EOC, AP or IB exams. And it is good when you wanna actively monitor student progress. So when I'm in professional development, off campus or have a sub on campus and working, I will often assign a Desmos activity so I can watch students work like this. And I can even message students, hey, you didn't finish the first slide or hey, what's going on here? You've only started the activity. You did not complete all of our um, assigned activities. You can anonymize student names by clicking on this. It'll give you names of certain popular people. You can pace it by having them or differentiate by using pacing. If you pace, you can block out certain slides that you want them to use and then eliminate others. You can even sync to me if you want your students and yourself to follow along on the exact same pace. You can pause the activity if you need to stop and explain something or if you don't want students to submit any other answers after your due date. You can sort your student names by either name, shuffle, or time entered. Time entered is going to be your default. So let's unpause this and keep going through our activity. Okay, I love to start off on the student side with a check-in of the students, for the students, right? Checking in with their social emotional well-being so they can say a range of how they feel, just beginning that engagement. Sometimes there's a joke, etc. Now I'm gonna show you how interactive it can be. So for instance, looking at this activity where students are going through and learning geometric sequences, you can see this visually. Great for visual learners, struggling learners, or review. You can build in a graph right here for students to incorporate and connect their learning. And as you can see, there's a variety of question types. You can either have students um, enter their activity enter their answers. Again, great for open-ended questions and share with the class so they can see what others are, are doing in their class. What I like to do is to add little slides in between so they can see the sections. So after they're learning, for instance, then they can practice. It's often helpful to go ahead and add slides or select activities that have slides where they, students can go right back and find out what's going on or review their formulas. All right, now I'm gonna work as a student. This is a, a feature using what we call the computational layer where students can check their answers. If I put my answers in, for instance, I have a first term of two, common ratio of two, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put in some other answers. I'm gonna intentionally make a mistake right here. And then when I hit check, I can see, or students will have that immediate feedback and know that they need to go back and adjust their answers. Now I can change my answer and then go ahead and do that. As soon as they get it all right, you'll see the script come in and say, great job. If you're building your own activities, you can actually incorporate an answer key that is a lot less um, complicated. So you can also give students immediate feedback by putting in a question, like I copied this right out of the EOC practice guide, and then just added a slide after that to ex for students to see the answer and the explanation as provided by Godot. Then I added my own little hint in, per, in um, italics for my students. You can also go ahead and 
batch your answer keys where students are doing several problems and then checking by either topic or content area like this. So there was a, you know, a few slides before and then students are able to get that immediate feedback as well. You can integrate the graphing calculator in Desmos by simply changing the title. So even if you didn't make your own activity, such as this one, you're gonna go here, select edit your activity, then go to the name, click on graphing. You can always limit it to scientific. I prefer to use graphing because that is what students will have accessible to them on the common assessments. And then when you save it, and you look at any of those slides, students will be able to go ahead and click on calculator and the calculator pops right up for them to use immediately. I'm gonna quickly show you what the computational layer looks like and then I'm gonna show you how you can quickly customize your activity to give you a preview of what it will hopefully be the next video. So if I click here, okay, and then I open that little green um, icon that's edit computational layer script. You can see that there's a bunch of code here. So you can either adjust this, okay, or steal or creatively borrow from somebody else. So often I will open up two different Desmos activities and cut and paste how exactly what I like. So for instance, let's say I had two different Desmos activities open. I could click, hit an empty slide here, click on the slide that I'm trying to copy, control C, and then control V or copy and paste, and then go ahead and put my activity right there. So it's extremely easy to go ahead and customize. I will say that while Desmos is amazing, Desmos is not awesome. If you are grading for accuracy, it's best for completion grades or an ungraded assignment, like, you know, after an assessment. Best used on laptops. It's the, most of the activity screens are too large for cell phones. There is no submit button, and I'll show you how I deal with that. Students will often be confused as to whether they are completely done with the activity or not. What I do love is these activities are saved in the cloud and students can always go back and change their answers and access it at any time as long as you do not pause or close the activity. Students can go back and change their answers. So that can be a plus or a minus. It's great um, if you want them to do some extended review. Not great if you are doing, um, if there's a hard deadline. So you do have the option to pause or to stop the activity as mentioned. So this is what I'm referring to with the card sort. You would have to do these manual calculations, but again, I usually use it for something where students just require immediate feedback and they can use it um, or go back to it as much as they would like. When I'm done with my Desmos activities, even if I am borrowing one that I love, I go ahead and add an all done slide. These will often change. You can put any image here that you would like. You can even borrow them from somebody else. I usually borrow these um, from other Desmos activities just so that the students know that they, you are actually done um, with the um, activity. I would recommend that instead of using slide decks as a math teacher, you use Desmos because it allows you to embed questions and to pay students along with you. So if you are one of those teachers that likes to create slide decks for presentations, consider using Desmos and just putting the images of your slides right here. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching. Bye.